recognize Mr. Wilson from South Carolina for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, and best wishes on your uh, service as chairman. We're just uh, so happy to have you. And thank, thank you, you uh, to our witnesses being here today. Uh, it's especially uh, good to see an alumnus of uh, college, uh, Governor Polis, uh, although he's giving it away and violating union work rules with the big smile he has. He indicates he's happy to be here, but he can't wait to get home. So, <laughs> and so best wishes on your service. Um, Mr. Gentles, uh, it's, uh, you have cited what's uh, going right in American education. You call Arizona the gold standard for education freedom after the passage of the Universal School Choice Bill last year. Can you explain how the law works and how you consider it the gold standard? Yes, so Arizona has had a program called Empowerment Scholarship Accounts in place for over 10 years, and these provide uh, state-created um, savings accounts that can be used for eligible education purposes for K-12. And so these can be uh, tuition, but also tutoring, therapies, textbooks, and if the funds are left over, they can be even rolled over and used for, for college. The, the program was expanded for universal eligibility, setting a model for other education savings accounts in the country. There are over 10 states with, with these programs now, and we, we think that this is the, the future because it offers control, freedom, and flexibility for parents. Well, it's, it's really a great model for the rest of the country. Congratulations. Uh, Dr. Sullivan, you discussed how the rapid developments of technology are increasing skill demands in the modern workforce. I'm really grateful in my home state of South Carolina, we've been promoting uh, technology. Uh, it has resulted in my hometown of Lexington, South Carolina, the largest Michelin tire company to, uh, corporation uh, investment in the world. Additionally, it's uh, led uh, to our state now being the leading manufacturer and exporter of tires of any state union, and then uh, with success in our state uh, with Governor Carol Campbell of BMW, uh, we're now the leading, uh, with Volvo and Mercedes Sprinter Vans now, we're the leading exporter of cars. Uh, but it's due to uh, te the technology and the technical schools uh, that we have that have made this possible. Uh, with the development of workforce development system, it has to evolve. How can the workforce system better embrace technological innovations to increase efficiency and improve the services available to job seekers. Thank you, Mr. Wilson, and, and congratulations to South Carolina on an incredible, uh, uh, great work that you have done. We have been on the other end of some of those competitions that, uh, that you won, and uh, we're, we're very proud to see the progress going on in South Carolina, and great uh, work by your community and technical college system there to make sure that the state of of South Carolina has the, the workforce talent that they need in order to be able to support those businesses once they arrive. Uh, it's important to note that uh, I mentioned 60 million adults in this economy with a high school diploma or, or, or less. Each year in the state of Louisiana, we graduate about 40,000 kids from high school a year, but yet we have 1.1 million working age adults who have a high school diploma or less. Oftentimes, they're the same parents to the young people that we were just describing. And so from, from our perspective, we must build in continuous opportunities for on-ramp, uh, in, for individuals to get into education, short-term training to get the, the uh, education that they need to be uh, able to take on that first job, but then also a great relationship with the employers, like the ones that you mentioned, to help advance the, the education of that individual so they understand the technology. Thank you very much. And hey, we enjoy our competition with you, but it's not fair when you bring people uh, to Mardi Gras season. Uh, it has an uh, unfair advantage. Uh, and uh, Mr. Pulsford, uh, you were going through the Western Governors University's uh, responsible uh, borrowing initiative. Can you go through it uh, uh, even further? Uh, how does this benefit students? Yeah, thank you for that uh, question, Representative Wilson. The responsible borrowing initiative is simply based upon the principle that if you give information, if you give better information to individuals, they make better choices. And so what we do is we actually expose to our individuals what the total cost of attending and completing their degree will be at WGU and make recommendations to them as to how much they should borrow. What we've actually found is that, you know, fully two-thirds of the students who uh, actually follow that recommendation, and another 5 to 10 percent end up actually choosing no federal aid whatsoever. What that has allowed WGU graduates to uh, achieve is, is that we've reduced the borrowing by 30 percent in terms of debt per graduate. It has declined by 30 percent since the, re the Responsible Borrowing Initiative. And we've actually also reduced the total number of students who are, who are attending WGU and their actual use of financial aid to do so. 
Well, thank each of you for coming in again, Governor. We're happy to have you here. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Wilson.